When you're building a model railway layout, does the keep it simple stupid principle still apply? Or is it a case of, it's my layout, it's my way? Welcome to Dad Brown. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome. If this does happen to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name's Richard, AKA DadRail, and I'm a mainline freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. Welcome to an update video on the DadRail model railway project. In this video, we're gonna talk about the control systems that we're going to use on the layout, how we're gonna control the trains, how we're gonna control the signals and the point works and the technologies that we're gonna use surrounding that. But before we do, we're gonna backtrack to the last video and just check where we're at. So in the last video, I had a track plan and I said I'm happy with it and it was final and it wouldn't change. Guess what? Yeah, it's changed. <laughs> I think that was always going to happen. So since that video, I've been collecting rolling stock and I took a trip to my local model shop over in Eastbourne, Train Times. Now it's not Train Times anymore, unfortunately. It is now a shop known as Mostly Trains, which is a second-hand dealership. I'll post a link to their, their details in the description below. Always shop local if you can, guys. Anyway, my main purpose of going there was to get myself a few pieces of set track, just so I could create an oval of track on the dining table so I could start running some trains around. I managed to sell it to Danny, my lovely wife, by telling her it was for my son, Sammy, but I, I think she kind of saw right through that, if I'm being honest with you. Anyway, setting it up on the dining table, running some trains around. What I've noticed is that a lot of the stock that I've been using, it's been mainly 37s, as you can see here, um, the Dapol 68 Fantastic Model Freightliner 70. A lot of the models, that the oval I've got is third radius curves. A lot of the models were struggling on third radius curves. And the actual layout design that we had was incorporating a minimum radius of radius two, second radius curves. And we had a lot of curved points and crossovers and bits and bobs going on there. So I've done a bit of research on RM Web about curved points. And the general consensus was don't do it if you want reliable running on your railway. Reliable running is something that's really important. I don't want to be constantly dealing with derailments, especially when you're at exhibitions. So I've had to go back to the drawing board, back to the AnyRail software, and completely, I say completely, and sort of retweak the layout a little bit. So the minimum curve radius on the layout is now third radius, and I've got rid of all of the curved points. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, this has meant that the layout has had to grow a little bit. So it's no longer 16 by five, it's now 16 by six. The only person complaining about that, funnily enough, is my wife. I'm actually not too bothered by it. I've also added a cassette section at the very back of the layout. As you can see, the fiddle yard isn't the biggest. We don't have that many roads to play with. So the cassette section's just gonna make it a little bit easier to take formations of trains on and off the track without too much bother. A suggestion made by Loco66, so thank you very much, bud, for making that suggestion. So at the moment, this is where we are at with layout design. However, this is an ongoing project. I've got a feeling once we get the baseboards and we start laying track, things are probably gonna change a little bit once again. So, layout control, keep it simple, or not. One of the joys about building a model railway layout is there are no rules. This is our world, this is what we create. There's no, you must do it this way, you must do it that way. You can make it completely realistic, you can make it completely fictional, or in my case, you can completely over-engineer all the solutions, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how over-engineered it is. As long as you enjoy building it, that's the key thing. I'm sure when I'm halfway through this project and I can't get anything to work, I'm probably gonna change my mind. But for now, the layout control system is something I'm really excited about and really, really looking forward to building. So where are we heading with layout control? Well, I can tell you now, if you haven't guessed from my social media post, we are most definitely going down the DCC route. I've got myself a 5 amp NCE Pro Cab system, the 5 amps meaning we're going to be able to run quite a good number of trains on the layout, and the reason I've gone with the NCE system will become clear in just a few minutes. I did think about doing DC analog for all of about 10 seconds. I've operated and built DC analog systems before with isolating switches and controller switches and bits and bobs, but it becomes an absolute minefield. And I think the flexibility of operations you get with DCC and, and sound and lighting and stuff like that is really unparalleled these days. And that is where it's at. So all the trains are gonna be controlled by DCC. Also, 
all of the point work is going to be controlled by DCC using the Cobalt IP digital point motors. Now these cost an absolute fortune, so um, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And we, we've got a membership option as well if, if you really want to help me out. So DCC points, DCC trains. This is where it starts getting interesting and potentially over-engineered. So I have mentioned in the past that I want the layout to have some form of automation on it, but I want to achieve the automation on the layout without any sort of computer screens or iPads or anything like that. I want a physical panel with buttons we can push, with lights that light up. I don't want to be going to a model railway exhibition. No disrespect to anyone that does, it's absolutely personal preference. I don't want to be going to a model railway exhibition and operating a computer all day or, or playing trains from my phone on my iPad. I want a physical panel, physical control panel that I can interact with that's tactile, that I can press buttons, I can get feedback from. So the main control panel on the layout is gonna be based on an NX signaling panel. Now, if you've ever seen pictures of large signaling centers on the real railway with big panels full of buttons and lights, that's pretty much what we're gonna be creating, but on a more scaled down version, of course. The way an NX panel works is pretty simple. You press your entry point, you press your exit point, NX standing for entry exit. Press your entry point, press your exit point, and the system changes all the points along the route and sets all the signals. So there's going to be no fiddling around with DCC controllers trying to find what points to switch and what accessories to control, or going through macros trying to work that out. Everything's going to be handled just by pressing the entrance button and the exit button. The routes themselves will be indicated on the panels using a series of LEDs. So when we press our entry point and our exit point, we'll get white LEDs light up on the panel to show us the route that has been set. And as the train progresses through that route, those white LEDs will change to red, indicating the presence of a train in that section of track. There's also going to be manual point switches on the panel, so if the entry exit route setting system does fail, you'll still be able to flick a switch in the traditional way, move the points and run trains. You've always got to have some sort of fail safe. I'm also exploring the use of NFC, that's near field contactless technology, same thing you find in your, your credit card or your Oyster cards, uh, stuff like that. The idea is that we can have a readable chip underneath the train, these things are absolutely tiny, we can fit them underneath the train and then have a reader underneath the track. As the train passes over the reader, the system will then know exactly what train is coming out of the fiddle yard and onto the layout, and we can have actual train describers on the panel that display the train's head code as it progresses through. We can also link the system into an automatic station announcement system and the fantastic train tech customer information displays on the station. Automatic route setting will also be key to operations on this layout. We've spoken a little bit about how there's going to be automation on this layout, so let's dive a bit deeper into that. One of the joyous things about owning a model railway layout is being able to put trains on it and drive them around and operate them. Some of the models that are coming out now are absolutely stunning, so why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to put trains on and drive them around? This is a big boy's toy. You know, let's play. Absolutely, let's play. But the importance of having some sort of automation on the layout when you go to exhibitions can't be understated really. I've looked at layouts in the past, they look absolutely fantastic and there's nothing moving on them. And if you've only got one, maybe two people operating on it, they're having a chat, sipping, sipping a cup of tea, it's completely understandable. That's why we want a level of automation on this layout. We want something to be able to run at all times. Fundamentally, the way the automation is gonna work is quite simple. If we have another look at our track diagram here, you can see we've got these two outside fiddle yards. We've got three roads on the clockwise fiddle yard and three roads on the anti-clockwise fiddle yard. The way the automation will work is to send the first train round. When that reaches the fiddle yard, it will send the second one round. And when that reaches the fiddle yard, the third one round with the cycle repeating. Obviously, it'll be running clockwise and anti-clockwise at the same time. The problem with this is it doesn't give much scope for actually playing trains and enjoying the layout, which is absolutely what we want to do. We don't just want to press a button and let this thing run all day. We want to play with it. So that's why without the use of a single computer screen, we are having a dynamic automation. And what I mean by dynamic automation is the automatic trains will respond to the signal aspects on the track. So if you're doing a shunt out of the platform into the sidings, the signal will be set to red, the automatic train will see that, it will come around the corner, stop at the red signal, you'll do your shunt, you can clear the signal, the automatic train will carry on. Likewise, if you want to, you don't even have to run trains, you could just play signaller. 
You could just let the automatic trains do their thing, stop and start them at the signals as you see fit. It's really full of possibilities. So the big question is, will it work? Well, hopefully, maybe, yes, possibly, it should do. I'm 99% confident that we can get this to work. I've done a few test runs with a bit of set track, uh, trying out with various different sensors and different configurations, and the results do look quite encouraging at the moment. So how are we going to achieve this? Well, remember me saying I was going for the NCE system? This is the reason why. This piece of equipment here, the NCE mini panel. Now, if you've not seen one of these before, effectively this is a DCC controller. And what this allows us to do is connect up to 30 physical switches. We can connect 30 physical switches into the terminals here. We could even use sensors such as infrared sensors or track circuit sensors connected to the individual terminals here. Each individual switch input will allow us to program up to four steps of macros and then send that out to the track. So for example, we press a switch that's connected to point one, point one tells train one to start moving. We press a switch that's connected to point two, point two tells train one to stop moving and so on and so forth. That also works with points as well. So we've got our switch and our panel connected directly to here. We press our switch on here, this then sends the DCC command to the relevant set of points to move. The problem is, how does the system know that the track circuit's not occupied, that it's able to move those points, that there's not a red signal in front of that train that I'm telling to start moving? This on its own doesn't know that. And that is where this piece of equipment right here comes in. This is an Arduino. Now, I'm not gonna to delve too much into the technical details of the Arduino, unless you want me to. I'm more than happy to do some videos on that. Essentially, this is a microcontroller. You could say it's a mini computer. It is a sort of mini computer, but it's a microcontroller. On this particular model, we've got a row of pins along here and along here. I think there's 16 on this particular model. This is a, an Arduino Uno. And these pins allow us to connect inputs or outputs to them and it has a little microchip here. Now using a little bit of computer programming, we can do some pretty fancy stuff with this. We can sort of say to it, when I press button one, I want you to turn on LED one, but I only want you to turn on LED one if button two is turned off, for example. So we can cr start creating logic and start creating arguments. So we can have our track sensors connected to here. We can have all of our point switches connected to here, all of our infrared detectors, Everything can be connected to here. It, it will be more than, it'll be multiple Arduino boards. We have to link them together, but that's getting a bit technical there. And then the Arduino board will do all of the maths, all the algorithms, and decide whether we can change that set of points, whether we can start that train running. So effectively, what we do is we take both bits of technology together. We take our Arduino board. Into our Arduino board, we plug our infrared sensors, our switches, our track sensors, or whatever else we need to. Then on the output side of the Arduino board, we connect that to the NCE mini panel. So we press a button to set a route. The Arduino looks at it and goes, can we set that route? Yes, we can. The Arduino then sends a command to the NCE mini panel. The NCE mini panel then converts that to a DCC signal and sends that out to the track, switches the points, starts the train moving, and God willing, the whole thing works. Now, I can hear many of you shouting at the computer and writing down in the comment section already, but you can buy software to do that. You can buy this piece of off the shelf equipment to do that. You can buy that, to, you know, download this software. Computer control is the future. I'm not denying that it would be easier with computer control to create rosters and timetables and that sort of thing. I'm not denying that there's off the shelf components that can already do this. But my point here is, I want the challenge of programming the Arduino. I want the challenge of making the railway work in this way. And when you're building a model railway layout, that's what it's about. It's about that enjoyment. I don't have to do it the same way somebody else is doing it. I can absolutely do it my way. Now, when it all goes horribly wrong and I'm pulling my hair out, I'm sure I will probably be changing my mind. But for now, that is absolutely where we're at.
So a quick point of note, at the time of filming this video, DCC Concepts have just released their super panel, which does contain the ability to put conditional arguments in it. So that is something I'm currently looking into at the moment. So I think the next thing to do is to get a piece of MDF or plywood or whatever I can source in a hurry and actually build a concept layout, put some sensors on it, put some trains on it, see if we can get this thing to work. So that is going to be the next video. We're actually going to start breaking ground and building something. So hopefully you'll come back and join me for that. If you do want some more technical videos on the way the Arduino works and how we're going to interface that into the layout, then comment down below. I will more than happily make those. And a big shout out to um, the lovely people in my Discord server who are really helping with the Arduino programming. You'd be surprised how simple it is. It's, it's not overly complicated. It's, it's quite easy to do. So if you have enjoyed this video and you are still with me, please do hit that like button, consider subscribing, it would be amazing. If you do want to help on this project or you want to talk about it, you can head over to the Discord server. I'll put a link down in the description below somewhere for you now. You can also check out my social media channels where you'll find out information about my day-to-day -day life as a train driver and all that sort of good stuff. There we go guys, thank you very very much for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed the video and hope to see you in another one very soon. Bye for now.